Well, because a lot of people in their millions are tired of this old system of doing politics. They are tired of hunger, starvation. They are tired of scarcity. They are tired of terrorism, banditry. Uh, they are tired of corruption in this country. And they've indicated that they want to turn things around. And uh, I have presented myself to do so. And I have made very powerful arguments wherever I've been given the opportunity. And I thank you for the opportunity we have today. And you attest to my credibility of 30 years, consistency of 30 years, honesty of 30 years that you have known me personally. Most people don't know this, especially people who I, we refer to as children of democracy. People were born around 98, 99 when I left the country and spent 20 years in the US. So all these people want a brand new leader. They don't want the same people who were governors for eight years and ruined their states. They, are, they don't want people who had never, never stood up for anything, who can't stand up for them. I've been standing up for the Nigerian people for most of my life. And I've never been remunerated for it. And I'm not looking for remuneration. I just want to keep doing what I know how to do best, which is stand up for people who are vulnerable uh, in, in our society. And those who may not be vulnerable, but deserve a better place to live. I, not everybody wants to leave Nigeria. Some people want to stay. And there are so many who have left, who have discovered that the grass is not as green as you thought on the other side of the aisle. So I'm standing up for them, and I believe, having been made and uh, given the opportunity to present myself, that Nigerians can see transparently through me and vote for a leader that can stand up and work for them, a leader that is capable, a leader that has integrity, a leader that believes in progress and prosperity for the country, a leader that has ideas and is able to present and share it to millions of our people. That is why I don't even think I would win. I know I will win because that's what would be a win-win for the Nigerian people. And I believe that they will take that decision sooner than later. That's why I said at uh, that National Peace event that very soon these tables will turn. Indeed, but uh, again, uh, I, I, I have two questions, but let me ask the first one. Uh, uh, in 2019, on this same platform, you, you told me uh, uh, that you believed that you would win. As it turns out, you didn't. And you have said why you I didn't. I didn't because there was no election. That, that's what I'm referring to. You said there was, there was no election. But yeah. the point was that yes. uh, 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 the election took place, results were declared, you didn't win. What makes you think this time will be different? Because I have made that point just in the last question, that more and more people whose eyes weren't open to the ideas I was pushing on your, on your show, if you listen to that show very well in uh, 2019, uh, which I'm sure you've probably watched again. You know, I was pushing the idea of renewable energy, which has now become mainstream. I was pushing the idea of free education, and people now realize that you need it. I was pushing the idea of minimum wage of 100,000. You know, people were saying at that time that it would cause inflation. Inflation is now at 17% or more. That's depending on who you're listening to. No minimum wage is causing it. What is causing the inflation now, since you are still paying the old, ragged uh, minimum wage? The truth is that all these ideas that I put out there, there's nobody who can defeat those ideas if we had free and fair election. Anybody who wants to call me a loser in an election must be prepared to hold free and fair election. Then we would congratulate the winner. But don't go and hold a shambolic election, allocate votes to people, and start blackmailing those who disagree with you that the election didn't hold that uh, they are sore losers. No, that's not how elections are conducted. Now, that's why I think also... it's an unfair question to ask why I'm saying that there was no election, because most of you actually know the truth, that the election no. in 2019 did not have, it wasn't a credible, it wasn't a free and fair election. That that's is why very, they that have is to run to court. Debatable. That is extremely debatable. I don't know well, that it was not the free fact that it's debatable at all, I, we should be having elections in which we have no debates about. The no, credibility of elections should not be debated. It should not be something no, subjected to a debate. No, it should happen, and we should be all agreeable with it because the transparency of election is the most important currency in an election. People went to court in the aftermath of that election, and the courts declared that the election was valid, it was free, and it was fair. Remember that. How do you win elections if you don't make alliances with other people, even if they are of like minds, uh, and that sometimes you do uh, things of convenience in order to secure power to help the people that you're so anxious to help? 
And in this election, we've, we've been the only party that had a solid alliance with the PRP. There is a PRP vanguard, the original PRP, that was started by Malam Aminu Kano, which uh, 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 this uh, former uh, governor of uh, Kaduna State, Palarabi Musa, continued. We made an alliance with them. We met in Kano. It was announced everywhere. That's the best alliance that has ever appeared out of uh, this election circle. And you know about it. So those are the kind of Indeed, alliance I we do. make. The alliance with pro-people organized uh, parties and organizations. But the most important alliance in this election is the alliance of the oppressed. And we are allied with the oppressed you know, in their daily suffering, misery, thinking, and their desire to liberate them.